Okay. All right. So here we are back at our workbench again, and now we can talk about or address the differences and the similarities between a level one charger mm -hmm. and a level two charger. So we'll start with yeah. a difference. The difference really is the supply voltage and the available current that they can produce. So I got the little guy. I'll go first. Okay. So here's a level one charger. This is typical of one that would come with an electric car. Mm -hmm. All electric cars come with these. It's, it's almost like, a, uh, like an emergency kit. Well, you know what? This, really? is, this, is a, this is the, I bought a Kia. This is the, the charger, the level one charger that came with it. Mm -hmm. It's actually a pretty cool little unit. It is, yeah. it is. So it's really simple to operate these devices. Mm -hmm. It just plugs into a standard 15 amp electrical receptacle yep. inside your garage or your carport and they're laid out you see here we've got a 90 degree angle at that plug mm -hmm. so that when it's hanging there's no stress on the cable yeah so it comes straight down and this is typical of all of them mm -hmm. and normally this receptacle would be closer to the floor so this almost lays well, on the floor. And in the event that it does just sit on the floor, it actually has some little rubber feet right there that it just yeah, sits that's, on. Yeah, that's really a neat idea. Is, yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, the Kia did their, their homework when they yeah. produced this one for sure. So once that's all plugged in, it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. And as long as the timer is not on, on your car, and something that you really need to, uh, to be aware of mm -hmm. is that if the timer is on and you plug this in, it's not going to charge the car. Mm -hmm. So make sure the timer is off mm -hmm. or if the timer is on that means it's probably the end of the day and you just come home and plug the thing in and forget about it and then the morning is going to be charged mm -hmm. mostly mm -hmm. here is the business end so yep. what we have we'll take a look at the similarities so this now. is the level two unit the basic level two and you can see that the j1772 connector is uh is pretty much identical um with the exception of the considerable yeah. Uh, wire size difference. Yeah. You can see this level two is almost twice the size. Obviously, it transfers quite a bit more energy, so it's required. Yeah, now, this is 110 volts yep. slash 120 and maybe 13 amps. 1.2, 1.3 kilowatts. Yeah, roughly. the same as a toaster. Which if anybody asks, yeah. You know, it, and you're going through this and you're looking at, oh my goodness, the, the electrical bills are going to be through the roof. It's like running a toaster. Interesting point, Hazel, one of our coworkers here, she's got a Kia, the same one as I do, she's got the same charger. When she plugged the level one charger, when she plugs in at home in her garage, believe it or not, she trips the breaker. Now, Rob and I haven't experienced she, that. She's, she probably never uses a toaster in her garage either. <laughs> <laughs> Rob and I haven't experienced that, so something to consider if you plug this in and it pops the breaker, uh, move no emergency yeah. just find another receptacle it just yeah. means there's a couple extra things on that circuit that are running and and uh you're dipping into that a little bit when you're grabbing that 13 amps but mm -hmm. uh the level two completely different now we're talking about 30 amps of uh charging power or s at 208 6.3 kilowatts we should mention right now yeah about the range so if you've got just we're talking about a 30 amp which is the most yep. popular one but, Absolutely. But. Well, yeah, good point, Rob. We can be ranging anywhere from 3.6 kilowatts right up to 16. 18. Or 18. 18. With yeah. a Tesla. Yes. For the 18 for Tesla owners out there, for sure. So, but in terms of available power in panels today, and when we're talking residentially and even commercially, if you're doing more than one charger, obviously utilizing 100 amp breakers, uh, you may not have the capacity. If you do have the capacity, there's a cost that's associated with that. And it depends starts, on the facility too. Yeah, well, because if it's I'm, a residential house, mm -hmm. I'm not going to plug in a 100 amp charging breaker. station and a breaker and mm -hmm. take up my entire Which house. is a 100 amp <laughs> service. And yeah. trust me, there are people that are like going, I could yeah, probably be okay with that. But <laughs> realistically, yeah. you're not going to put a 100 amp breaker in a 100 amp service. So maybe in commercial, in a commercial uh, operation. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, yeah. But it's different. When we're talking residentially mm -hmm. uh, or really, um, 40 amps and commercially most of the stuff we do is mm -hmm. 40 amps yep. uh, that's that's where we live so I guess differences in terms of 
why would I choose a level one over a level two, or why would I choose a level two over a level one? Um, we talked about that a little earlier, the range, the type of driving that Rob and I do, but if, if we start to look at the supply units, not a lot of manufacturers are offering level one chargers today. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's a plethora of level two chargers that are available, and you know, the, and the price reflects that and too. the price Suppl reflects that well, yep. supply and demand. So this little guy, you might think is going to be less money, but it's the same it's price as a basic level. It's pretty, two. it's pretty close. But when we talk, when we talk about capabilities and features of the charger, now we're talking about access control. I mean, these guys will sit on your Wi-Fi network at home. Uh, we can set them up in a fleet, public workplace. They can be on a network. They can be allowing certain individuals to use the charger while others can't. You can charge a fee for use at the station um, and manage power intelligently. Uh, there's all kinds of things that we can do with these chargers. That you cannot do with one you, of these. Yeah, that you cannot do with one of these. So, mm -hmm. for your consideration, um, I believe level one charging is a long-term charging application or secondary form of charging. I think as the range goes up in vehicles, driving habits will change. We'll want to, to charge our batteries yeah. more. Well, more. See, the, the batteries are getting so big now. Yeah. So. The earlier models, like I have, mm -hmm. is a battery that's three times smaller than yours. Mm -hmm. So in the same period of time, I can get a battery fully charged with one of these. Mm -hmm. You can't. No, and, and again... So you would need a level two. And again, this goes to, to the conversation we had prior, and we'll talk more about it when we charge a vehicle, is that it really depends on how you utilize your electric vehicle, how far you drive every day, do you drive at night, do you drive on the weekends, you know, all things to consider. But I think if there's one thing that really separates these two, uh, separates the level one and the level two, is the capability for smart charging. And, mm. and for me, that's a game changer. Yeah. And, and also, in terms of the level two... You can you know, manage power. You yeah. can manage the power in the building. You can because what if you don't have enough room in your panel, yeah. you want to put one of these yep. in, you need to be able to manage the power. Yes. Something else, maybe, we, while well, I think of it too, a difference is the power supply. Oh, we didn't get into that, did we? Yeah, we walked here we are. That. Oh, here we are. It's a good thing it's, you brought that up. Yeah. Okay, so very similar. Big money. <laughs> <laughs> very similar in the way, in functionality, you're plugging it into a receptacle. Obviously on the uh, level two, the blades are much bigger. The more more energy is being transferred, mm -hmm. a higher current. Um, this is a 650P, it's a plug, which would go into the receptacle. Typically we see the 1450 configuration, we have an extra prong here, and that's just like the range receptacle that your dryer plugs into at home. Um, those are a little more cost effective than the 650, so that's what we use, and they, they fit nicely into a junction box. If we take and this is a pigtail, by the way. If we take the uh, plug off the end, we're looking at a hard wire configuration. Now, this is how a lot of chargers show up from the manufacturer, just like that, with three pieces of wire sticking out. This gets wired into a junction box that has a circuit that's been pulled from the main service panel mm -hmm. to wherever your charger is located. Uh, disadvantages, if you want to take the charger off the wall and take it somewhere, you yeah, if you had a second, say you had a, yeah. a cabin in the woods or someplace and you yeah. wanted to be able to take your electric car there, if it's got a plug, you can unplug it, yeah. take it with you, and then go to the other place as long as you've got that same receptacle yeah. installed at the other place. Disadvantages, if the charger is not in a secured area and it's plugged in, obviously it's much easier to take than mm -hmm. if it was hardwired, but uh, all for your consideration and depending on where you want to utilize charging. Now, can these... So I get asked all the time, and I'm sure you do too, do these charge all electric vehicles? Are they all the same? Very good question, and we get asked that very frequently. So we already looked at this. Yeah, we compared this. That those are identical, but what about a Tesla? Well, here, here's the thing. These J1772 connectors will uh, work with any electric vehicle manufactured in North America except... Tesla. Tesla. But... Elon Musk is a smart guy, he figured mm -hmm. that out. Here's the adapter. Um, this guy right here goes right on the end of the J1772. When you put those on there, make sure you they are on there and locked because um, this one that I'm holding in my hand right now didn't get put on properly and the contacts burnt and it uh, got a little stinky. So this now will allow the J1772, so there's, and the there's, difference. A, there's a difference, to plug into any 
charger that the owner happens to roll up on. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. Make sure you plug this thing in. And the Speaking way you know that, the way you know that oh. is it if it is that hard to come off the yeah, connector, you know you've got it on there right. So why don't so. we do that? Why don't we go and plug one of these? Actually, well, let's go plug them both in. Well, I just, I'm all and about transferring some energy. Let's do that. Let's, let's go do show it. them how, how this all comes together. Cool. Okay, so we've got our level one charging station. So the same one that we were showing in the tech zone. So just go through the plug-in process. And again, it's the same it's J1772 connector. Now you can see that on the dashboard, on the top facing the windshield, that there is an indicator lamp that starts to flash, indicating that it is actually uh, charging. And that illustrates to anybody in the area as well that wants to come by the car that it is actually under charge. You'll also see that the dash, the uh, instrument cluster is indicating 1.3 kilowatt. That's indicating the amount of energy that's being consumed by the vehicle to charge the battery. Okay, so we've given the level one a chance. So let's go and grab the level two charger. So again, here's our level two charger. So just unclip it from its holster. No hocus pocus. Plug this bad boy right in there, right following the level one. Just as with the level one charger, with level two connected, you can still see the dash light indicator facing the windshield is flashing as before the difference is that on the instrument cluster instead of delivery uh, energy at 1.3 kilowatts per hour we're looking at 6.1 kilowatts per hour okay so i guess in terms of uh, level one and level two cut why oh, it, it's, not, it's not releasing okay here hang on hold on Okay, so oh, it lost. this is what happens oh. when you let a rookie. Uh, <laughs> so hold on a no. second. Hold on, hold on. Voila. I could have done the same thing with a screwdriver, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this. Just yet. I'm not putting, there we go. Okay. Okay, so in terms of level one versus level two, Rob talked about the amount of energy being transferred, and that's really what this all boils down to. Uh, we're looking at 1.3 kilowatts per hour or seven kilometers of range versus 6.1 kilowatts. Yeah, and 40 kilometers And 40 per kilometers hour. Of, per hour, sorry, yeah. of range per hour. And, you know, I think in terms of, I mean, you as an EV driver or a would-be EV driver, mm -hmm. are you, I mean, you know, uh, the type of driving habits that you require for your vehicle. So, you know, using this information, I think will give you a very good guideline in terms of what uh, charging level works best for you. Yeah, you bet. And, you know, and again, and I, I said this earlier, for me, I'm level two all the way. I know there's additional costs, but there is nothing cooler than having a gas station yeah. at home. Yeah. I wake up every morning, I go to work, my tank is full, and I know that terminology doesn't relate, state of charge, full, but it's a pretty cool yeah. uh, technology. Yep, power on, dude. All right, hope you enjoyed it, uh, or this segment. Any comments, place them below. As always, we'll do our best to get back to you and answer them. And again, uh, stay tuned. Mm -hmm. More cool, innovative, exciting stuff coming your way.